all right good afternoon guys today's session is we bring to you enzymology and this course is normally taken by by chemistry students and other science related courses now this is enzymology and under it we have uh, uh, this enzyme kinetics and under enzyme kinetics we have this sign these two scientists who coordinated to bring equation and a plot so today we'll be looking at deriving from the board, deriving Michaelis Menten equation. Alright, so Michaelis Menten, there are actually two scientists. Michaelis is a male, Menten is a female, and they coordinated to bring about what we'll be looking at today. All right, so you join me as you go to the board to see how things will go as expected today. Alright, so on my far is it left? On my far left. We have a chart here or a plot there. Now, before we go into deriving their equation, let's look at something small about this chart. All right, so when you look at the chart here, you can see the ordinates and the abscissa. The ordinate is velocity or the rate. So this is the rate, and the abscissa is substrate concentration. All right, so um, what they actually did was that they did experiments using uh, enzymes being uh, in reaction with substrates, right? And uh, you can see that at this point, this was rising. They had a rising peak here. Then at this point, it was flattening. Now, when you look at this very critically, you can see that it is having two segments. So the first segment, which I'll go to the bottom mark, you can see there is a straight segment here. Uh, so let's refer to this as a line segment. So let me refer to it as A. Now, from this side going, it started flattening down. Uh, so you can see a constant uh, plot here. It is flattening. So let's call this side B to denote plateau. Right? So we have line segment, which is from this side up to this side. Then you also have the plateau yes yeah, so plateau actually means this flat uh, line here yes good now when you look at these two segments of this plot you can see that we have rates we have substrate concentration now you can see that uh, on the line segment the rate vein is directly proportional to the substrate concentration what do i mean by that as we increase the substrate from this side, you can see that there is increase in the rate. So let's see if the substrate here is 2 and here is 3. Going up and tracing the rate, let's say here is 4. When you go to 3 and you trace it, here will be like 7. So you can see increase in substrate brings about increase in the rate. So that's what the first or the line segment is depicting. Right. So now, when you go to the plateau, it is the flattening line. You can see that even though you be let's do it for you to understand the line. So let's say here is five, here is six. Now, when the substrate is at this side, you trace it to the rate to get a value, let's say eight. When it is at six two, you trace it to the rate. Then you get another value which is similar to the first value. Meaning that increasing the substrate from the plateau doesn't change the rate. And so from the plateau, you can say that the velocity is not, or the rate is not dependent on the substrate concentration. And in rate, this is kinetics. And in kinetics, you can't talk about kinetics without talking about rate or rate equation or rate law. Uh -huh. So you can see that if the substrate concentration is not affecting the rate, then it simply implies that at the plateau, the rate is zero order with respect to the substrate concentration. Uh -huh. So when you say something is zero order with respect to substrate concentration, it actually means that in as much as your efforts that you put in to increase the substrate, it is still not going to affect the rate. So basically, this is something I want you to know before you go into deriving the equation. Now, at the plateau too, the velocity or the rate is directly proportional to the enzymes. And let me explain this further. At this side, 
at the plateau, the rate is first order with respect to the enzymes. Even though on my plot you don't see enzymes, you see rates and substrates. But then this plot is actually uh, enzymes and substrates. Enzymes binding with the substrates, right? Uh -huh. So if you are saying that increasing the substrate doesn't increase the rate, then it means that there is a factor that has stopped. And that factor is enzymes. Uh -huh. So uh, at this side, you can see that uh, we have more substrate than we have free enzymes present. Uh -huh. So you can see the rate is first order with respect to enzymes. All right, so on this note, let's go straight to what we have for today. Um, now, let's come to this side. We have E. My E here denotes enzyme or free enzyme. My S here denotes substrate. The E X here denotes enzyme substrate complex, also known as the saturated enzymes. Then my this enzyme and my P is a product. We all know that when enzymes combine with uh, substrates, under the uh, optimum pH and normal temperature, they are able to form products, provided there are no inhibitors to inhibit or decrease the rate. So we'll be able to form these products as you have on the board. So let's see, under the microesmentin equation, we have certain conditions that we need to uh, comply with in order to derive our equation. We have the equilibrium states, we have the steady states. So today we'll be looking at the steady states. We're looking at the steady state now this arrow is supposed to actually be two forward and reverse uh, but then i did it one because we are considering this as initial stage you see when you are doing your reaction at the initial stage you don't have any products present and uh, so if there is no product then it means you can have a reverse from the products back to the complex so this is actually depleting initial when we've just started our reaction and we don't have any product presence okay now at the steady state it is actually um, reforming the complex and the complex also dissociating to products and backwards to our enzyme and substrate let me explain it further now the steady state is normally valid or it's valid when you have more of the substrate present when you have more of the substrate concentration present and i'm saying that the steady state is actually reforming this complex and this complex also dissociating so you're looking at forming complex and dissociating complex uh -huh. now i earlier on said that we can't talk about kinetics without talking about rate law or the rate equation so let's look at something here Looking at this, you can see that we have this forming this, and this now dissociating to your product. Now, the first reaction here, from the initial state to the complex, it is actually a fast and a reversible reaction. Uh -huh. And you know in kinetics, we don't determine rate law from a fast and a reversible reaction. So we're actually going to use the next one. The next one which is from the complex dissociating to the product. Now this complex, this reaction, E S going to E and P is actually your R D X. And talk about R D S, you mean rate determining step. So it is this uh, equation that will actually determine the rate of the overall reaction. Good. So this is our R D S. So now, now that you've known that this is our R D S, let's see the rate equation for it. So we know the rate equation then will be equal to now let's go back for me to do a correction here we are moving from here to here so the constant k1 then this dissociating to this so k2 now this complex dissociating backwards will have a constant of k minus one all right so here is k2 so the rate is actually dependent on the concentration of the reactant and at this side you can see the reactant is the complex so we are just going to bring the constant, as you know already from chemistry, constant times the 
concentration of the complex and let's call this as equation one so this is our first equation we want to put on board All right so let me go by it again this equation here is our rds and hence you are using this equation to determine the rate and this rate is not only for this it is for the overall reaction so i want you to note that even though we just use this to get the rate this rate is standing in for the overall reaction so let's uh, label it as one now i was talking about the steady state where we have the formation of the es and we have the dissociating of the es so let's look at the rate for these two concepts so let's say let's r f r f denotes rate of formation so we are forming this so we are just going to write is equal to now we are moving from here to here so it is equal to the constant k1 times the concentration of of the enzyme times the concentration of the substrate this is the rate of the formation of our complex now let's look at the rate of dissociation of the complex now we are now coming to dissociate this and i earlier on said that uh, in the steady state this one can also dissociate to this and we are looking at the equilibrium states which will be in another video with the equilibrium states it will not dissociate to this it will rather dissociate backwards but then for the steady state it is dissociating to the products and also backwards so let rd depict the rates for the dissociation of the complex so you are just going to have uh, let's see going backwards is going to use the constant here this going backwards we are going to write k minus one then ex plus it's dissociating forward so plus now when i'm going forward it is causing this k2 value so plus k2 times the concentration of the complex and you know i earlier on said that the rate of one of this reaction should be equal to the rate of the viral reaction so from here you can see that rf should be equal to rd the rate at which our complex is being formed is the same as the rate at which it dissociates either to the forward or to the reverse all right so we can from here we can say that k1 e i'm taking it from here x is equal to k minus one e s plus i think we'd have to make space here k2 Yes. Right. Okay, so I think from this side we have uh, ES ES here. So we can factorize it out to get a simplified version of that. So we can write K1 E X being equal to we have these two, so I'll bring one out. Then I'll use it to multiply this and this. So k minus one plus e two. Okay, so this is what you are getting. Now, as you are moving on, still put in mind that we are trying to, we are following this step because I earlier on said that this step is coming from the RDS, and it is the RDS that determines the rate of the overall equation. So we are actually looking for something like this. So as you are working, you can see we have es here. So we are trying to get es or make es the subject here in order to place it here to get our overall rate okay now from here um, let's bring the constant to one side and the complex to, to the other side so let's divide this by k1 es you know in equation what to do to the left to do to the right so divide this two by k1 Es, um, so that this es cancels this, and this k one cancels this, so that at the end you'll be having e s all d over e s being equal to k minus one plus k two all over k one. 
Now, when you look at this side, at the right side, you can see we have constants for the rivers, constants for the formation of the products, and constant for the formation of the complex. Now, when you put this together, you form one constant known as or represented with K, capital K, subscript M, and it denotes Michaelis constant. So, Michaelis constant. Is equal to the capital K M. So this is Michael's constant. Okay. I would like to erase this side so that I'm able to continue from there. So let's have this equation. I want to erase this from where from there. So from there. Okay, so let's bring this one here. So we have concentration of K, concentration of S, all over the complex. And this is given as the Michaelis constant. Now, we are still using, or we are still under the steady state. So from here, let's see what you can do. We have in the reaction, we have our total enzyme being equal to free enzyme plus the enzyme that went into binding with the substrate. So let's note this formula down. So let me call it equation two. We have total enzyme being equal to free enzyme, then the complex. If you combine your free enzyme and the complex, you get your total enzyme. Now we are trying to make this the subject so that you place it here or substitute it here. So making this E the subject, I'm just going to get the total enzyme minus the complex. So we are going to put this equation here. Alright, so wherever you see this, we put this there. So we are just going to get the concentration of the total enzyme minus the concentration of the complex that's this representing this and all this is being multiplied by the substrate concentration so we are just going to add this to it and you can see it is over this from here and all this is giving you the Michaelis constant at this point i can claim this okay so from here Let's open the brackets, and this is mass, it's not by chemistry. So let's open the brackets. So this multiplying this, you have uh, E T, then the substrate, this multiplying this minus E S substrate. Now this is the denominator, so it cancels this. And it as well cancels this. So we can write it in this way. Being equal to Km. So from this side, you can see that this complex cancels the complex here. Uh -huh. So we have, uh, from here, we have uh, total enzyme multiplied by the substrate over Es minus. giving you the Km. And I earlier on told you that we are looking at the weight determining step from the second reaction. So we are, our focus is on this. And we are trying to make E as a subject from this equation. So from here, let's make E as a subject. And as well, this is also mass. So we are going to send this here. Then we will do reverse and whatever. So let's go. So I think I can claim from this side. Yes, once you have this, you can claim from here. So, sending this to the other side, we have total enzyme concentration multiplied by the substrate over the ES. Km plus the S. Okay. 
So from here, we are making this the subject. So I'm sending this to the other side, then I'll bring this to the other, to the denominator. This goes here, then the whole of this stands. So that my E is that I'm looking for will just be equal to the total enzyme times the substrate concentration all divided by km plus substrate equation i think equation three i have claimed the equation two so this equation three so from here you can see that uh, we have uh, how do you call it we've been able to isolate the complex and here too we have this there okay so what's next we are going to substitute the value here into our weight determinant step, which is equation one. So let's go. V is equal to K2 times the complex. But then we realize that the complex is giving us this whole thing here. So wherever we see ES, we are placing it with this. So E, T, S, all over, all over, KM plus the substrate concentration. Equation four. Equation four. All right. So from here, guys. Um, I wrote equation two, giving you the total enzymes being equal to the free enzyme plus the substrate. Let me write it here to use it to explain from this side going. So I said the total enzyme it is equal to free enzyme plus the complex. Now, guys, at this side, let's go to the board this side. You can see that as the peak is rising, to get your point to platinum, even though you're increasing your substrate concentration, it will get to maximum weight. And, guys, at the maximum weight, we don't have any enzyme, we don't have any free enzyme present. So, earlier on, I said that the, at this side, the weight is first order with respect to the enzyme. So, it means that when you have a, a rate which is flattening or a line which is flattening then it means that we don't have any free this thing there if there was to be free enzyme the this will still continue on rising uh -huh. so there is no free this thing here so from here you can say that the total enzyme at the maximum is equal to your complex meaning that all the enzyme presence have 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 bind with the substance and they form this complex and this complex, ES complex, is also known as saturated enzyme. Uh -huh. It is known as saturated enzyme because at this side, all the enzymes present are binding with the substrates. So you don't have any free enzyme. So it is known as saturated enzyme. So as you proceed, instead of saying enzyme saturated complex, you can also hear me or I'll be using this as well. All right. So if this is okay. Now, this happening at the maximum rate, uh -huh, you only observe this at the maximum rate. So, using the rate from equation 1, you can say that at the maximum rate, you are just still going to get your K2 times the ES. But then we've realized that at the maximum rate, our ES is still our total enzyme. Sorry, our total, yeah, our total enzyme present. Uh -huh, so, let me take it again. This thing will come when we are at the maximum rate. That's when we have V max. And at the maximum rate, the V max will just going to be equal to what we have here. But then this ES will now be equal to the total enzyme. And I've explained it with this that at the maximum rate, we don't have any free enzyme there. So from here, we can say that V max is equal to K2. Instead of ES, we write E. T. Guys, if you understand this, then I think you are done with the derivation. Uh -huh. So from here, when you look at this, let me call this equation 5. So from equation 5, looking at this, you can see that this one is the same thing as this. If you can see it very clearly, what you have here, the same thing as this. It means that wherever I see these two parameters, I can put them as there. So guys, I'm going to... Modify this and put Vim as this. So let me claim from this side. Okay, from this side. So from here we have Vim 
it's got i'm just writing this but then this represents the mass so the mass then your s all over what you have here km plus your s so we are done with the equation so that is my place maintain equation for you now this is we did this under the steady states uh, condition when in our next video we're looking at the equilibrium states but then when we do the equilibrium states you realize that we will be getting the same equation uh, so this for the steady states now there is something i want to say before we end the lesson this is it so we have the rate being equal to the maximum the substrate km and the plus the substrate communication now what happens when the rate is at half maximum so let's look at that when rate is at half maximum and i think those my chemistry students in university of ghana they're giving an assignment on this where dr daniel drew who is our enzymology lecturer give us uh, in our lecture in his lecture he gave us this to go and derive it for him so it will be a good opportunity for uh, university of ghana by chemistry students uh, all right so what happens when the rate is at half maximum what do i mean by that what happens when v is equal to half v mass this is not by chemistry this is mass so you are just going to put your v wherever you see your v you are just going to substitute it with this half maximum so let's go from here. We are going to put V mass over 2. Being equal to the whole thing here, V mass S over Km plus F. My writings are so big. I have to learn how to write small. Okay, so let's see. Let's try and make Km the subject in C. So from here, guys, let's see what will happen here. I'm going to let's do cross multiplication. So this goes here and this comes here. And the whole of this come will also come here. Uh -huh. So if you don't understand this section, you can take pen and paper and try and follow so that you get what I mean. So I want to do it straight away. I'm going to multiply this by this two. This goes here, this come here, this will come. So that I get Km plus this being equal to two V mass. S all over V mass. Good. So from here you can just see that the V mass here will take away the V mass. Uh -huh, it will take it out. So that you get your Km plus this giving you giving you sorry to this. So guys from here let me clean this side so that I will or I can continue for V mass. Okay. So from here we have Km plus substrate concentration giving you two times substrate concentration. Let's do like things. We have Km, which is the constant, being equal to 2x minus this s. 2x times minus s, we get s. So this is what we get when the rate is at half maximum. So you can see that the Michaelis constant. It's actually at the substrate concentration when the rate is at half maximum. So this is what Daniel Doctor do wants us to do for him. Uh -huh. So it is it's a step like that. On this note, um, I don't know whether I've answered everything that I'm supposed to answer. On this note, we bring to this video to an end. But then before I go, I will put my number down. If in case there is any challenge. Maybe there is assignment, there is any challenge in the biochemistry field where you mind or you need help with. You can test me. And I really like the testing and the commenting. So I want you to comment, but then test me directly so that uh, I'll make a video on that for you. We are here for you. Now, um, make sure you do subscribe to the channel and you like us so and give us thumbs up. Then you also share to other groups. If you have a friend reading by chemistry, let's see as KNUST, UCC, anybody in the list, you can also share this video with them. But then I want University of Ghana by chemistry students to 
support me because I'm their own. They are from them. Uh, so from here, let me put my number on the wall so that you guys can test me directly so that we talk. So this is it for today. Uh, so my number is 0541558425. And my name is George. Okay. So on this note, we will call it a day. Thank you.